Today we're going to be going over my top five, well, well that's 10, my top five Air Jordan 1s in my entire sneaker collection. Welcome back to the channel. What's up with you guys? How you doing? How you been? If you did not know by now, my name is DJ and this is the DNA Show. If you haven't already, I know it's cool, it's fine, but go ahead and hit that subscribe button, man. Join the family, we're growing oh so close to 50,000 subscribers, bruh. That's crazy, you could be the next one to join the family. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit that like button as well, that helps the algorithm oh so much. And I think it's time that we get into this video and talk about my top five Air Jordan ones in my collection. So I put this list together because a lot of people have been posting their top five on Instagram stories and different things like that, so I felt like it was right that we put a list together and make a video for you guys on YouTube so I have roughly 32 to 35 pairs of Air Jordan ones in my shoe collection right now the sneakers that I selected out of my collection aren't just sneakers they aren't just all oh, they're dope they're all hot shoes I think some of them have a bigger value than that and that's the sentimental value and why they mean so much to me so that's why I have those type of shoes in my collection as well not just all oh, these are hype beast sneakers and I gotta have them for my collection type thing. So always take that into effect and always remember that the shoes that mean most to me, nine times out of 10, don't have the highest value. But let's go ahead and get into the video. So I'll be starting with number five being my least favorite and number one being my most favorite. And then I'll tell you a little bit of story behind each shoe. So let's go ahead and start with number five. Number five, the Air Jordan 1 Union Black Toe. The reason why I think it means so much to me is because it's like an upgraded version of the Black Toe Air Jordan 1 and I love the Black Toe Air Jordan 1. Not to mention the fact that it has a very unique design to it, especially with the OG vibes on the upper right here matching with the lower half of the shoe. Then obviously everybody knows the shoe was exclusive and hard to find. I had a little bit of a struggle when it came to me finding my pair as well. And I think that's why this shoe means just a little bit more to me, just because I had to work a little bit harder to get the shoe. I worked a couple trades and I ended up getting a pair of my size and I was so happy when I got these. It's got that yellowed midsole for that vintage vibe. It's got nice leathers. It's got that new book on the swoosh. Like there's a lot of factors about this shoe that I really, really love. Three things that I really love about this shoe is that it's kind of like two shoes in one. That's one dope factor. Another thing is the yellow lining around the leather for each cut I think that's a very dope a nice vintage vibe and a nice dope addition to the shoe and then the third thing that I really love is the blue Frankenstein stitch around the shoe and also on the tongue I think that's very dope and very clean so that's why I think this shoe lands in my top five number four the Air Jordan 1 Chicago off-white this shoe right here I don't think I need to say much everybody has a pretty good understanding about this sneaker it created a lot of hell over the past couple years and rose a lot of hype just for the Air Jordan 1 alone and I had to work really hard to get these shoes. If you haven't heard the full story, check out the link above. I have a full story on how I got these shoes, the way I worked my trades and different things like that. But overall, again, this shoe is amazing. It was an insane start to a new trend for just deconstructing and being creative and thinking outside the box when it comes to design and what it has done for not just Off-White, but for Nike alone. The collaborations that they have done over the past couple years because of Off-White have really changed the game for Nike and Jordan as a brand. And I feel like a sneaker like this can play in that same role as like the Red October 2, when everybody remembers when that came out and how big of an impact it had on the market and with other brands and different things like that. I feel like this shoe played that same exact factor. And that's why I think not only because it's the very first one and the originator of the hype, Obviously it's exclusive and it's worth a lot of money, but I think it's very unique and it's very different. It's very original in its own way. And I feel like he did a great job with the design. I love this sneaker. Unfortunately, it's very hard to wear because the mesh starts to fray as you wear the shoe and it'll tear apart. So that's why I haven't worn these yet. I plan to buy a used pair that's already kind of messed up. That way I can rock those. But I love this sneaker and I'm very happy to have it finally in my collection. Number three, the Air Jordan 1 Bread Band. Now this right here, if I didn't have this shoe, the Bread 1 was for sure going to be in my top five. But because I have this shoe, this one took its place. And that Band X on the back right there, bruh. I literally picked up 22 pairs of this shoe when it came out. I couldn't pass it up. At the time, I was flipping them, making my money, still had my pairs on deck 
deck, doing all those things, thinking I was making a good buck. And then obviously now we know what the price of the shoe is. I wish I would have kept more, but who would have known damn near 10 years later the shoe would have been worth that much money. But at the end of the day, I always knew I was like, I got to keep at least one pair on ice in my collection, not just for the storytelling and how I had to work hard to get the shoes and all those different things. But this shoe right here set the tone for quality, uh, uniqueness, and all these different things. I ended up getting this pair right here before it was like a thing, before everybody knew about it. And I was so happy because they were just sitting at the Nike outlet. My friend hit me up and he was like, bro, they got banned ones at the Nike outlet. Like the ones that you see on the internet, they're sitting at the outlet. And I was like, no way, bro. Like those are never supposed to come out. They got scrapped. And then they ended up having them there. So then I ended up getting pairs and I was so happy about that. So these right here mean just a little bit more to me because I remember the times when this all happened and everything like that. And to be able to hold a gym like this and tell that story, not just being like, oh, I bought these in the resale market. I feel like that's dope to be one of the original buyers and having the shoe from day one back when it was $109. I hope you guys are enjoying the video so far. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit that like button. That really helps the algorithm. Let's go ahead and get back to the video. Number two. The Air Jordan 1 Dornbecker Mr. Booper. Now this shoe right here would have taken number one's place, but then as I was digging through my collection, I found a shoe that just might be a little bit better than that one. So I had to put these at second place. But these right here mean so much to me because not only is this shoe just amazing, the way it was put together, the yellow outsole, the factor of just the Dornbecker series and all those things, but I actually know Tony. We went to school together. I was with him during that creative process and understand all the things that he went through during his sickness and his health. And then to see him have his own shoe created. And then the fact that he brought a pair for me, hand delivered them to me during school. It was just a dope feeling to know that I have a pair of shoes that were made by my homie. And he got me a pair for me in my size, size 13. It's got the four star general here to represent our school and all these different things like that. So this shoe is not just a sneaker it's not just a dope shoe it has a bigger value than just money this is a shoe that i knew i was like i probably might never wear this shoe it's just for sure like a display piece a storytelling piece and just a very huge sentimental piece and probably one of the jordan ones that i probably would never end up getting rid of just because it means so much to me my connection with my bro tony all those different things this shoe right here had to go on my top five and when i started thinking about it i started thinking about value of shoes and all those things and i was like that don't matter this shoe is way more valuable than money and i don't care if it's worth ten thousand a thousand or a hundred at the end of the day i knew these was going up there at the top of my list okay taking it to my number one most important most favorite most coveted sneaker in my entire air jordan one collection now this one's probably gonna shock you guys and blow your mind but honestly i don't care because this one means the most to me and i don't care what it's worth i don't care what the condition is this shoe right here is insane to me and that is the Air Jordan 1 Chicago three quarters patent leather. Now this came from a pack where it was the UNC, the black and gold, and then the red Chicago right here. I had the whole pack back in the day. The other two started to yellow and fall apart, but this one has always been strong on me. And why am I so happy about that? Because I used to have this pair of shoes when I was younger, when this shoe originally came out. What's the release date on these? 2003. So back at that time, I think I was in sixth grade. And I'll remember when I got these shoes. I was so happy. My parents got these shoes for me and I literally was just going crazy. Like I thought these were so dope and I used to try to get fly in them. I used to wear them with everything and then I got a scuff on them and I was like, there's no going back. So then I turned them into my beaters and they became my rockers until I couldn't fit them no more. And I used to wear them and wear them and wear them, rode my bike, did every single thing in this shoe. And I had a bunch of different Jordans at the time, but for some reason, this specific shoe right here just made me feel some type of way, made me feel so dope, made me feel so fly. I don't know if it was the patent leather or the colorway or whatever it was, the comfortability. Well, I don't know what the factor was. I just know there was something about this shoe that made me happy. So when I got to high school and I really started seriously collecting again, I ended up purchasing the entire patent leather pack and they were all a size 13. And this was a part of that pack as well. When I got these, I just knew like these ain't never going nowhere. So with that being said, let's recap the top five one more time. We have the Air Jordan 1 Black Toe Union. We have the Chicago Off-White Air Jordan 1. We have the band with the X on them, factory release. We have the Dornbecker Mr. Booper, and then we have the Patent Leather 3 quarter Chicago Air Jordan 1. These are my top five favorite Air Jordan 1s in my collection. I know a lot of people would have put the Travis Scott's or the UNC Off-Whites or something from the pack 
the new beginnings, different things like that, LA to Chicago. I've heard a bunch of different suggestions as I had posted earlier when I said I was gonna be making this video. But at the end of the day, this is my top five. I do love those other shoes. I think they are dope, but they just don't hit as hard as these ones do for me. Please drop some comments down below and let me know what you would recommend I pick for my top five or what you would rank for the shoes that you know that I have. And then again, drop a comment with your top five from your Air Jordan 1 collection. I would love to hear what you guys have in your top five for your collection because I think it's dope not just for me sharing mine, but for you sharing yours as well. So with that being said, I hope you guys liked the video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram as well. That's where you'll see more information with me posting on my story and on my feed. When I get things early, I always like to open it there first, let you guys know what will be coming for reviews here on the channel. And if you haven't already, don't forget to say what's up in the comments. My name is DJ. I'm signing out. I gotta go. Peace.